On the next episode of Painting and Travel, Sarah travels to Cedar Key, Florida, visiting galleries and the historical museum, learning about the town's rich history. Roger uses oils to create an island scene with a wooden fishing boat. Welcome to Cedar Key, Florida. This is a very nice small community of approximately 900 people. Now in the past there have been as many as 5,000 people here. It always depends on the industry at the time. Right now the industry is clamming, shrimping, fishing, and some tourism. It's a lovely spot because there are artists here as well as it's quite dog friendly and there are places to hike. And John Muir, the famous conservationist, also was here in 1867. We stayed in the campground earlier and had a very nice time and we've been walking around this morning looking at some of the local shops which carry arts and crafts. invite you to look around with me later, plus I'll take you to the historical museum and we'll see some interesting artifacts there. When I get back to the studio, I'm going to do a painting of this subject. I like the strong horizontal and the strong vertical here. Also the fact that this has a nice contrast with the white and contrasting with this dark palm tree. I've stretched a 30 by 30 inch canvas, and this is a very fine linen canvas, very nice to work with. And I'm using oil paints today, and these are a very nice, high quality oil paint. On my palette, I have lots of colors, titanium white, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, Indian yellow, cadmium yellow, three or four earth colors here. This is raw sienna, burnt sienna, Burnt umber, yellow ochre. I have some greens, a sap green, chromium oxide green, olive green. I have a violet. I also have a Payne's gray. This is called a ice white. And this color here, I mixed this earlier from a painting I did a few days ago. I just took all these colors, mixed them together, and this is what I came up with. So this sometimes acts as a very nice neutral color. So if you have scrap paints left over, mix them up into one pile and you can make a sort of a nice neutral color that works good on a lot of different areas that require some very neutral color. All right, I'll get started with this painting and I've sketched the boat here in the palm tree and I've toned the board with some burnt sienna and that's of course dry. I'm going to begin with some dark colors, my blues and reds, a bit of a burnt umber there. And this is the uh, base of this palm tree. Okay, this is the uh, boat down here. Let me see, I'll, I'll stay with my darks for a while. Pick up some of these greens. Just want to get this area of this palm covered right now. I'm not worried about the edges of the palm tree yet, but just the big shape here. I'll even pick up some cadmium red. These subtle variations are really very important. Take some white. Maybe some of this color I used from the other day. Some cerulean blue. Just a lot of different colors here. I'll make this much grayer. I'll cut around this boat here. 
very interesting little boat. This whole area of Cedar Key really reminds me of, of old Florida, how it looked when I was a, a young boy. This is a very quick part of doing a painting, blocking in, but very, very important part of the painting. I'll keep moving down this way, and we have some grass, it's almost a little bit dry looking. I'll just continue this grass out in front. This burnt sienna that's underneath really helps because some of that can show through. It almost looks like the dirt <laughs> underneath, which is uh, sort of the reason for putting that on there. Just sort of gives an earth tone to things and gives kind of a bit of a head start when, uh, when painting to not have all that white on the canvas. Sometimes I leave the white on the canvas, but in this case, it, I thought it was a good idea just to tone this board. And also the white on the canvas can be very distracting. Well, I'll wash my brush and begin with the boat. Here I can use some Payne's gray maybe. That's, boy, this is really a color I don't use often. A really gray area there, and this is the boat trailer. See, I'm just trying to do this with a, a few strokes. I'm not trying to get into any detail right now. This is just blocking in the large shapes and patterns. And the reason to do this is to, is to get these values as correct as I can. If the values are, are not right at this point, it just doesn't take much effort to change things. But if I were to spend a lot of time with detail and a lot of little strokes here and there, and then I found out it wasn't the right value or the right color, it would be more of an effort to, uh, to change all that. Load my brush up there. And with one stroke, I'll see if I can pull this all the way down. There. These are very interesting chairs on this little boat. Right now, I'm just going to block these in as one large shape. And then when I get further along with the painting, I'll add the detail to all that. And I'll put in some of the lighter passages on the hull. And that's uh, catching all the sunlight, so I took my white, added some yellow ochre to give this a nice warmth. So anything lit by the sun there is going to, it's going to have a warm cast to it. Loading my brush up as much as I can. Just laying it down there, pressing the brush quite hard to get all that paint off. Now I will take a slightly larger brush and it's time to put in this sky. I could have painted the sky first, but uh, I like to paint around objects. It gives it a more painterly feel often. So that's what I'm doing in this instance. So I'm not going to hit this palm tree. This is, of course, very wet here, so I'm not going to dive into that area yet. I'm going to cut around it. Now I'm getting to the point where I can see where changes need to be made because everything is beginning to get covered on the canvas. So after I finish this sky, I can kind of step back and look and see whether this boat needs to be lighter. I really can't tell those things until I get the rest of this all in place. And then I can go back and make these adjustments. And again, that's the reason for, for blocking in. And I'll drop down a little bit lower here. And there's a dirt path going back here. All the big basic shapes are covered now. So this is the, really the first stage of the painting that I would say is finished. Now I can go in and continue with the painting and add refinements to all these big shapes here. See this shape here? It's just one big shape, one big color. Same with this, same with the boat and so on. So those big shapes were established. Now I'll go in and refine those a little bit at a time. Now within this large shape here, this, these background trees, there are a number of highlights on the trees and a number of shadows. From here, I can make some of these colors lighter and some darker without destroying the large overall shape. If I were to leave this as one large shape, it would just almost look like a poster. Uh, but we want to refine that more. 
So all these little shapes within the large shapes will help to do that. And now I'll go back to the sky and we'll pull the sky down into this area of trees. I didn't want to do that earlier because every time I pull my brush down into this area, I've got green on the brush. And if I go back here, then I've got green up there. So I often have to take my brush and just wipe it off before I go back and hit it with another stroke. I like to jump around in my painting. I don't like to stay in one spot for very long. So we'll go up to this palm tree and we'll begin adding some refinement to it as well. I'll take my dark greens. Here again, I'm using all sorts of colors. Here's the olive green and purple. These all make very nice, dark, rich colors. I'll pull that out. That's the palm leaf. Now I'll have white on the brush from that sky, so I may have to take the brush and just wipe it off slightly before I get this next stroke out there. I might be able to do one or two strokes that way. But you see how that starts to get very light as I do that? And if I get a little bit of white up in this, that's okay because there is a lot of light on the uh, palm fronds themselves. I just don't want to get them so light that they'll, that they won't look natural. A lot of darks in here. And let me scrape off a little of this color on my palette. And I'm mixing the sky color one more time. And I'll see if I can put some of these negative areas in this palm tree. I really have to just lay that on there and I can't do very much blending on this. I'll go down to the boat itself one more time with some pure white. I'm going to put that pure white over this yellowish color here. Now this is very wet still, of course. So as I put this on, it will blend with the lighter color, but it will make the uh, value lighter. Right in this area seems to be maybe where I need the most light. Just grab that white. And just lay that right on there. And then maybe at the back. It just seems to be catching a little more light at the back as well. So I'll lay that on there just real thick. Just drag it down. Could do that with a palette knife, I suppose, but I'm just not very good with a palette knife. There we go. I'm going to take some of my lighter greens now and try and strike in some of these palm fronds. So with my white, and let me see, maybe some chromium oxide green, touch of Indian yellow. We have some of the palm fronds. They're coming over this way and that way. So I just keep referencing my photograph all the time when I'm doing these. Just trying to keep my brush kind of loose here as I apply this paint. Something like this, I often hold my brush this way instead of like a pencil. <laughs> I'll vary the color some by using cadmium yellow, maybe a touch of red. What I'm doing when I, when I paint these, uh, I'm using one stroke of my brush, one side of it. This is, this is round, this brush is round, so I'm painting one stroke here on one side, then I'm twisting my brush just a little bit. And that way it'll give me a clean edge on another part of the brush. So when this part of the brush gets dirty, I'm moving it around and I'm using this part of the brush, which still has some clean paint on it. Some of the things like that I just sort of do intuitively. I don't really think about them that much. Now the reason I'm not having to wipe my brush off as I do these, this is already green. So if I get some more green mixed with this lighter green, that's okay. As opposed to trying to get this sky over into the green because I don't want that green to be pulled back into the sky. I don't want a green sky. So now I think I'm going to put this painting aside for a day or so, let it dry. We'll come back to it and we'll begin to add more of the details. the Historical Museum in Cedar Key, Florida. And this is Executive Director Amy Gerenhart, who knows much of the history of this town. I find this town to be very attractive. Um, it truly is old Florida. And it's a little bit off the beaten path. 
which makes it a lot of fun to visit. And when I look at some of the history and read some of what you have in the building here, I realize that this town has had to reinvent itself many times many with times. many many different industries. Yes. Such as well, it began when the railroad came here. We had lumbering, we had sawmills. There were uh, we had turpentine mills. Now the railroad would be from Fernandina, the other side of Florida, and came over here. Yes. And this was the the finishing mile, the, the end of the railroad here. Yes. And they loaded up all sorts of uh, lumber. They would they would load up lumber and they would also um, be delivering passengers. And then so the steamboats were here also, so it was a connecting point. Cedar Key also was a major supplier of red cedar used by pencil manufacturing companies. The cedar primarily then was made up into slats that were large enough to, to be long enough for the pencil. And then you would have two slats that once it was um, shipped out of here, it went to New Jersey, and then they would take the two slats. Then make a sandwich. They put the make graphite Make a sandwich in. with the graphite, yes. Now, I, I also was reading that there was a sponge industry for a while. For a long time. There were primarily Greek spongers here, and um, right now there's a lot of them still in Tarpon Springs, but at that time there were still people doing um, harvesting the sponges. I believe it was in the 1950s when the sponges were wiped out by a bacteria. What other um, industries do we have now? Um, it seems to me clams are very delicious here. Yes, clams. Uh, we're, I think we're the number one producer of cherry stone clams. Uh, we have started um, doing commercial farming of oysters here too, and so that's just getting underway. We do still have oysters that we will plant mm -hmm. and um, then we will harvest, and that's a state program. And so we're in a good place for that because we're 12 miles south of of the um, Suwannee River, so we've got all the nutrients coming through the Suwannee River, and then that merges then the fresh water and the salt water, and that's perfect for uh, growing oysters. I guess one reason people come here is for boating, yes. for sport fishing and for boating. Mm -hmm. And so how many keys are there? How many little bitty islands are there around here? There's 15 major keys around here. In high tide, there's fewer, obviously. At low tide, you see an awful lot of very small little islands out there. This is a very artistic town, isn't it? Yes, it is. We have an art festival every year that's very, very popular, and it's long standing and we have an art center right here in town. A lot of people, including myself and my husband, came here for the art. Oh, how interesting. Well, I can't wait to walk around, and I know I'll enjoy my time here. And uh, Thanks again. Thank you. Well, these oils are totally dry now, so I can continue on with the painting. And I'll start again with the palm tree up here and mix that sky color, cerulean blue and ultramarine blue, touch of white. Now before we had this issue of the greens mixing with the sky color, which we didn't want, so that's why I let this dry some. But now I can go in this way and not have any of these greens mix with the, the, with the blues. I'm using a bright here, and it's a uh, flat brush that has a nice chisel edge to it and just bring it to a nice edge there. So I'm going to try and cut in some of these negative areas. And I'm trying to leave some of these palm fronds here and just sort of cut between them to show that negative space. And I'll get rid of most of this warm burnt sienna color in the background. Some of it is still going to show through, which is what I want to, to give this a, a nice warm effect. And what I want to do is have all these spaces a little bit different size, a little bit different shape, so they're not all uniform. I think that's probably enough negative areas in there, at least for now. So I'll wash the brush, and we'll continue with the palm tree, but now I'll take some of the lighter greens and put over the top of this. So I'll take some white and yellow, and some sap green. Just drag some of these palm fronds out and they'll go over those negative areas. 
Now I want this paint to be fairly thin because I want it to flow off my brush easily. Now this, uh, this value and this color here will give this palm tree another dimension. It'll start to give it more form. I have to be careful not to go over the whole palm tree and do the same thing because I want variations here. So I want some of these areas to remain dark, some to be light. We'll make some of these areas even lighter. Those will be the accents. So I'll take some white and yellow and right where this palm frond sort of falls over. See, this palm frond comes from the backside and it just sort of falls over this way. So as it comes over the top and falls over to the front side, I'll get this nice little accent of highlighted color. It goes from the back up and then it falls over. And here we'll do the same thing. It's coming from the base of the trunk. It's coming over and it's falling out. So here we go again. We go up and over. Maybe a few longer ones down here. Well, that's good. The palm tree is pretty much finished. So let's go to the uh, background here. We'll put in this background color again. And the reason I didn't finish this on the first part of the program was because I didn't want this green to mix with the blue of the sky. Now that this is all dry, I can do that. Otherwise, I would have ended up with a, a green sky. So I'm just using the edge of my brush again, and I'm giving this a soft touch just to sort of feather this in and give it a distant look. Now, this is another palm tree right over here. So I'll take my uh, sky color and I'll do pretty much the same thing I did up here. I'll just drag some of this area of the sky into the green area here, which will be the palm. All right, now let's move down to the boat here. We have two chairs here, two seats. And I just painted these as one solid color, but there are some slats in there where the backing is. And we'll put some accents on these. I, I started out with sort of a middle tone, dark middle tone there. Now I can put the accents on in the highlights. And these are wooden, they're varnished, so I want to get a warm color. I'll use my raw sienna and some white. Okay, here are the slats. I've just loaded my brush up and I'll just bring those right down. And we'll continue over the top here. This part right here is in shadow, but the top of these has a nice highlight on them. Right across there. Now we have the rail here. And again, I want to make that very light and make this rail, right at the top of this rail, put a nice highlight on there, a nice accent. Let's drag that up. Now there's a few nice shadows on this boat. One of them is right here. And that will, that shadow will give this some form. So that shadow goes over like that, comes in. And then there's a ridge there and then it comes back down. Now this trailer is very straight, so let me take my yardstick here, and I'll place it right there, and I'll use that as a guide to make this straight line. Now a highlight or two right on the front of the boat and maybe the back. Now we made this very uh, warm to begin with because the sun is hitting it, and. Uh, gives it that warmth. But now I want to get some, some nice accents on there. So I'll put some pure white on my brush and we'll drag that right here on the front. This just gives it a little bit of form. I'm picking up a larger brush. We'll go down here to the grass. I'll pick a few greens here, olive green, chromium oxide green, just a few varied greens. And just with the edge of the brush again, just scumble in some of these areas. And I couldn't do this the first uh, go around because this was all wet and everything would blend together. So now, uh, since this is dry, it, it won't blend. And I can get this sort of a rough look of grass. 
And then we have a lot of pebbles and things in this uh, road. So I'll mix them some gray and just with a very light touch. I'm just touching the tip of my brush here to give a look of some rocks and things. We'll get some light green and with a few strokes I'll just make this look like there's a few weeds growing here and there. And right back here, I like this road. So I'm using my pure white and I'm going to accent this road right across there and then out the other direction. Well, a few more touches to this painting and I think I'll be finished. I noticed a red strap here tying the boat down and this is wet so I'll use my little stick here to keep my hands out of the wet paint. And this is just a, a tie down. And that also casts a shadow right on the side. And to finish this painting, we'll put the numbers right on the side. Okay, it says FL. I'm just using a small brush to do this. Helps to have been a sign painter for many years. And I'm just going to put some uh, numbers in there, make up a few numbers. I won't use the numbers of the real boat. I suppose I could, but uh, I'll just make up some numbers that mean something to me. <laughs> and then right beside that, there's usually a registration sticker. So I'll just indicate that as well. So I think that's going to finish this painting of the uh, boat here at Cedar Key. For more information about painting and travel with Roger and Sarah Bansimer, visit paintingandtravel.com.